Welcome to our channel, Behind My Story. Please like, share and subscribe. We lived with a monster who knew no mercy. He would hit and insult us all the time. I wished him dead on a daily basis. He would kick me out of the house often. But as we all know, there comes a turning point in everyone's life that either ends in success or tragedy. Oh, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Lara. I am the middle sister among four siblings. We lived with a cruel father, whose bad behavior had long erased any kind memories we may have once had for him. Our mother was kind, lovely, and responsible. She used to take care of us in every way, but she finally had to abandon us, because she just couldn't take any more of father's abuse. I remember the scene vividly to this very day. There was a big fight between my parents. At the end of it, mother had opened the door while holding a suitcase. We were too young to understand anything at the time. She was crying as she turned and walked out of our lives forever. We were expecting father's attitude to change after that, but it didn't. He continued mistreating and ridiculing us every opportunity he got, neglecting us completely. He gave us neither food nor clothes, only a very small amount of money to fend for ourselves. What could we do? We had to live with the situation. He would often return home drunk at midnight. Scared, we'd stay quiet in our rooms. The only bright spot in our lives was our dear brother Philip. He was father's favorite son, which caused us to depend on Philip to get anything we need, like money or other necessities. Philip was so funny, he could make us and even father laugh. He had a way with father and could usually manipulate him to protect us a little. We all loved Philip. He was the only sunshine in our miserable, gloomy existence. One day, we woke up in the middle of a stormy weather. We turned on the TV and listened to the news. It said the bad weather had spawned a huge tornado. It was heading our way. They advised people to stay inside. We all looked at each other, knowing full well that our old, worn-out roof could not withstand the tornado. Philip said he needed to talk to Father. After he knocked and entered Father's room, we heard Father shouting at Philip. Philip had a look of fear on his face. Father then shouted, If anyone wants to fix anything at home, then he is welcome to, but I will not fix anything. Philip gasped and said, But Dad, it's a big tornado. Father then grabbed Philip by the collar and pulled him up close, saying, Then you go fix it. Philip was so afraid he couldn't swallow. Father dragged Philip to the backyard. He brought nails, wood, a hammer, and a long ladder. Philip was terrified when Father pushed these things at him and told him to get to work. Philip begged, Please, Dad. But Father just shouted, Go. Philip took the nails, the hammer, and the wood and began to climb the ladder up to the roof. The wind was howling, blowing very hard, and I had a feeling of dread that something terrible was about to happen. Father just stood there, not worried about Philip's safety at all. To calm us down, Philip looked at us as if to say, don't worry, everyone. I'll be okay. There were many wires on the roof. Suddenly, a strong gust of wind caused Philip to lose his balance, and he reached out to grab onto something to keep from falling. Unfortunately, he got hold of an uninsulated wire. He screamed at once and fell off the roof. We watched, horrified, and began screaming. Father frantically rushed over to Philip's body lying on the ground. He lifted Philip's head into his arms and rocked him gently. But Philip was dead. He got electrocuted. We had never seen Father cry, but he cried a lot that day. At Philip's funeral, we all stood and looked at the photo, showing Philip smiling like an angel. Father hugged us as a group and said, Please forgive me, kids. I'm so sorry. I didn't realize that I loved you all so much. I'm so sorry for not being a good father. We believed him. We hugged him back. He was being sincere with us for once. From that point on, he was a changed man. He gave us everything. Love, attention, money. Now we love our home and our lives. I can finally say truthfully, with all my heart, I love you, Daddy. I don't believe in ghosts, evil spirits, haunted houses, metaphysics, etc. I only believe in science and facts. But sometimes things happen that shred all your beliefs. I want to introduce myself. I'm Lisa. I'm 14 years old. I live with my mom, dad, and grandmother, and they're all very proud of me. I'm the leader of the science club at school, and I've been the perfect student for the past two years. My hobbies are reading, watching educational videos, and learning. 
I like to discuss matters with rational people, not those who believe in myths, aliens, ghosts, and other such nonsense. I personally think these people have mental issues. One morning, my grandmother passed away. I was sad for a long time because I missed her so much. On the day of her funeral, the whole city must have come to say goodbye. While the priests were praying, I noticed something peculiar about one of the graves in the graveyard. After the prayer ended, I approached the grave in question, to investigate. There was some weird writing on it. Then, a wispy, transparent, smoky figure appeared out of nowhere. It said to me, Do not get closer to Donna Median's grave. Beware. I shivered slightly and asked the apparition who Donna was. And it replied, Who was she? She was an evil witch who liked to scare people. She was burned at the stake as a witch, but before her death she swore a curse that if anyone ever approached her grave, her ghost would haunt that person to the day they die. I did not laugh at the apparition's warning. Instead, I turned and returned home, thinking about what had happened. On a sudden defiant impulse, I decided to visit that grave, that night, to see for myself if the curse was real. I took my dad's flashlight and wore a raincoat. It was pitch black outside. The place was horribly unsettling at night, but I wasn't worried at all. It's not like it was real, right? I entered the gate to the sound of howling dogs and meowing cats. My blood ran cold, and a sudden chill ran through me. I turned on the flashlight and began searching for the grave. My hands were trembling so badly I dropped the flashlight several times. Sometimes I would step on something crunchy, and I would shine the light downward, only to see that I had stepped on an insect. Sometimes I'd see a cat here and there. Then suddenly, I heard an eerie sound close by. I froze, not daring to move. Slowly, I pointed my light towards the sound, and gasped, as my light illuminated a dark, shadowy figure. It was about my height, and dressed all in black. I spun around and fled, as rapidly as my faithful feet could carry me. I dove into bed, but I didn't sleep at all that night. I even left the lights on. The next day, when I woke up, I asked my dad if graveyards had ghosts, and he wondered why I would ask such a question. I was embarrassed and laughed to hide my fear. I told him that I was just curious. That was all. Dad looked at me suspiciously, but continued. I've heard stories, he said that some people have seen a ghost of a girl from time to time beside Donna Median's grave. I felt my heart sink, and I asked slowly, Is she about my height and dressed in black? He replied, Yes, that's how I've heard the ghost described. How in the world did you know that? I looked down casually and answered, Oh, I read an article about it on the Internet last night. My head hurt just thinking about this ghost thing. I made up my mind to prove or disprove it once and for all. I called my friend Laura and persuaded her to come with me to the grave. The following night, we met at the stroke of midnight at the entrance to the graveyard. Laura was shaking and constantly casting glances right and left. The weather was rainy and gloomy. The ground was muddy and cats were meowing everywhere. It would have made the perfect setting for a supernatural horror movie. While we were looking for Donna's grave, flying bats would occasionally startle Laura, causing her to scream alarmed. As we approached Donna's grave, we suddenly heard a sound behind us. We both turned around at the same time and screamed. A ghost was glaring at us. It asked angrily, What are you doing beside my grandmother's grave? Wait a minute. Are you girls? She uncovered her face, revealing that she was just a girl, and a beautiful one at that. She told us that her name was Carmen, and asked me to turn off the flashlight, because it hurt her eyes. I did. Then I asked, Who are you? She replied, I'm the fifth grandchild of Donna Median, the poor woman in this grave, who has been wrongly accused. We both whispered back, Wrongly accused? She continued saying, Yes. She was a victim of the Holocaust during World War II. Afterwards, she became a simple doctor who treated people who were afflicted with epilepsy. As usual, there are always some small-minded superstitious people looking to make trouble for others. They accused her of being a witch because they considered epilepsy to be a disease caused by a demon's touch. I come here every day to put flowers on her grave 
People have mistaken me for a ghost because I only come at night. I don't want people to know I'm related to someone they think to be a witch. I don't want to be shunned, scorned, or gossiped about. I try to comfort her and calm her a little by saying, Don't worry, Carmen. Your grandmother's spirit may be able to rest in peace if you tell people the truth now. We live in more modern times, and there's no need to worry. I won't tell anyone about you being the ghost. It'll be our little secret. Carmen laughed. She and I became good friends after that. Ever since that day, whenever I hear someone talking about ghosts, I just look at the photo I took of Carmen and I, and I break out laughing.